This is Twit. So I made the mistake here uh, that I think a lot of us make of jumping right in and not getting a sense of what AI is. I think we all kind of assume we know what AI is. Uh, you start the book with a history, a brief history of AI. Let's. What is AI? Yeah, what is this stuff? What is it? Um, so the, the easiest way to understand artificial intelligence, which again is not a single technology, but sort of an umbrella term for many different technologies, um, is an automated system that makes decisions using data. And so that's like it. It's and kind of a computer program. I mean, isn't that true of all computer programs? I mean, yes and no. So if we think of the first era of computing as as being tabulation, so that's mid-1800s, Charles Babbage, Ada Lovelace, um, and the second era of computing being about programmable systems. So ENAC and some of those um, early computers that, that used language that was more akin to, to how we speak so that you know, and then building out the architecture differently and, and all that stuff. That's that second era. So if we, I think a good way to think about AI is the third era of computing um, where we build initial systems and then those systems using automated processes perform tasks at a, either at the, at the same level that we humans can um, or, or better, uh, faster, more efficiently than we can. So it's part of a, a long continuum of computing. It's not a totally novel, different, unique thing. What it's, I've always tried to use as a definition for AI is that it isn't, it, you know, a, a von Neumann architecture is a very, you know, kind of uh, deterministic, you do this, then you do this, then you do this list of, it's a recipe, it's a cookbook for mm -hmm. a computer, and it may involve data. Uh, to me, AI requires that it go beyond that, that in some ways the computer is writing its own program based on what it's learned uh, in machine learning from the outside world. And maybe a good example would be the programs used to play chess and then later go. In the earliest days, Deep Blue, IBM's a chess playing computer, which essentially became Watson, was very much a program. It wasn't, I don't think you could call it artificial intelligence. It was fed a lot of uh, positions and games and given a lot of very, you know, concrete rules about how to judge a position. It was done so at great effort with the help of a lot of grandmasters. In fact, one of the criticisms of it when it beat the world champion was it was designed specifically to beat that one player. It had a lot of, you know, kind of specific algorithms then along comes uh, uh the uh, google ai um alpha alpha go which was much more of a kind of a generative program beat lisa doll the the world champion go player in a game that most people considered almost intractable from a computer program point of view because unlike chess which while it has a very 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 large number of possible positions it's a finite number i guess it's finite in go too but it's you know, many orders of magnitude larger, much more difficult to solve. But then along comes Alpha Zero, which is, in my mind, true AI. And by the way, Alpha Zero just recently beat AlphaGo 128 games to nothing, beating the, the, the best Go playing machine of all time, 128 games to nothing. And nobody did anything to teach AlphaGo. They simply provided it with the rules of the game and let it teach itself. Is that that's true AI in my opinion? Would you agree? Well, so so this is where language matters, and um, so so the so we went from Alpha Go to Alpha Go Zero to now Alpha Zero, and what's interesting about Alpha Zero is not just that it went from knowing nothing to playing Go at a at a um, superhuman level. But it was it's actually competent in, in multiple games. So it's an example of uh, hierarchical reinforcement learning and multitask learning. Right. It learned um, three ma major games in four hours. Right. <laughs> By so, simply playing millions and millions of games against itself. So now here's so I want to unpack because you gave a great summary and I want to unpack some of it. Okay. Um. So the way that we've so so the so. Even after the term artificial intelligence was coined at a meeting at Dartmouth in 1956 by McCarthy and Minsky, um, e even after that, uh, they, they 
and to be fair, we have always been approximating how strong a computer is um, using the measurements that, that we would use to, to determine how smart a person is. So we're, we're constantly talking about cognition. Um, and we've seen plenty of examples of AI for decades. We just don't think of it as being um, a decision versus a program. So the spam filter that most of us encounter now in our inboxes for, for email, or if you use um, text messaging on Android, and I'm assuming, Leo, you'll, you're an iPhone user, so I'm, I'm assuming this is true for you as well. Um, there's there's the suggested auto replies. No, iPhones, right? un, unfortunately, yeah. lack that because Apple yeah. doesn't want to do this. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but I know what you're talking about, inbox, and of yeah. course, Google Messages will do this a smart right, reply so feature. Yeah. Right, so those are little tiny examples of artificial narrow intelligence. It's Bayesian. Um, They're using statistics to kind of sure. Now you can. We're not really force. understanding anything. Well, so that's 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 sort of the crux of of how we got to now, um, and that is what's the difference between cognition and just a, a machine fulfilling its program over and over again, uh, faster, more interesting, whatever it may be. Um, and I and I think that that's where a lot of people get stuck because we keep talking about the difference between artificial narrow intelligence and artificial general ah, intelligence. This is an important distinction. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, all of the AI in our daily lives, we don't even recognize as being AI anymore because our, our brains have moved forward to some big her event horizon where right. some walking, talking robot is, is you know, going to fool us. Um, I would argue that Alpha Zero is a great example of artificial general intelligence, but you know, I think a lot of people in the community would would not um, call it that. But it points to a problem, which is um, everybody wants to know when. When are the robots coming to kill us? When is a computer <laughs> going to be smarter than us? Right? And. In order to answer that question, we need some kind of classification. And so the next part of that conversation is when is AGI, um, you know, and, and how, who will do it and how soon. Right. In order to get to that point, you would have to have a test. And the current tests to, to, to test the strength um, of these systems are built on and have always been built on deceit or uh, repetition, application. Right. This which is why we've the been Turing trained. test where that's you, right. You, um, you, or all you the can't. chess games and the chess yeah. games yeah. and the go games. Yeah. Um, right. So deceit or, or uh, replication. Right. And I think the reality is we, we, I think we we're maybe not doing this right. You know, um, a machine doesn't have to think exactly like we do or beat a human player to be powerful enough to have mm. significant impact on society. 